We start today with the incoming Senate Minority Leader, Steve Araujo. Senator, thanks for coming on with us. Good to see you, man. David, thank you very much. Good to be here. So uh, I, I want to start with a little videotape of some of the stuff that happened yesterday at the door to the assembly chamber. Let's take a look at that and then we'll come back and talk. You see this? See, see this, folks? It's the us entry into our house. This is America. This is America. An uh, illegal procedure, voting procedure they're relying on. It was deemed illegal and they're enforcing it. And this is tyranny, folks. America, see what's happening Look here. Look at our heroes up here. See what's happening, America. They're not letting the minority party vote. Yeah, I think that's ridiculous. Look, here's the deal. They just quoted a policy that said it's a state house policy. Did you hear them say that? State house policy. Am I in the state house? Yeah. So what's the difference if I go 30 feet that way or I go 30 feet that way or that way? I don't understand. Nobody can understand. They're not going to physically restrain us. We can walk right past you. So there you have some of your assembly uh, colleagues, including the incoming minority leader in there, in a confrontation of sorts with state police. What was, what's your reaction to that? Well, first, David, thank you very much. And I, I think some of the issues obviously there is, is not just the vaccine policy, but it's access to the, the people's house, the state house. Um, it was a policy that was put in place by an unelected uh, uh, joint management commission uh, we filed a lawsuit uh, because it's, you know, it was an unauthorized um, policy. And as you heard from many people, the, uh, the inconsistent application, first of all, you know, I know the media was detained from getting in uh, to see the proceedings as well. So that, David, that, I mean, that's the, that's the big issue. And for many, many months, as the cases of, you know, the, the virus have been going down, We've been at the state house uh, with public testimony, doing the people's business, and then all of a sudden now this is a new, uh, new policy by an, an unelected, uh, you know, committee. So we filed suit. Um, now before the, um, uh, you know, before the session, the uh, leaders in the uh, the Senate and the Assembly, uh, they they decided to make the decision themselves. Um, so therefore, and the court last night uh, did not dismiss. They said that uh, they, they, they took up the, uh, the uh, lawsuit that we had filed, but it has more to do than to, with just the uh, vac vaccine policy. It has to do with access to the state house. It also has to do with the, the fact that the legislature needs to be more involved. And for 21 months, we've, uh, the legislature has allowed one person to make all the rules, the mandates, and, and executive orders. And let's face it, on November 2nd, the people, uh, the, the election, the people said they've had enough. They want their legislators to be more involved. Well, I mean, I'll get to that in a second, but it was a little dramatic, no, to, to see uh, one of the assembly members shouting tyranny. I mean, that's a pretty strong word. Uh, for what was basically a procedural misunderstanding or disagreement, no? Well, I, I think access to the state house is, a, is an important aspect because it is the people's house. But also, listen, they put the state police, and you know, I issued a statement as well. They put the state police in a very, um, you know, uncomfortable situation, um, yeah. and they deserve better than that. And th as I said, David, this has more to do with access and they would deny access they did not access to the media so the judge set a date for december 13th uh but now the speaker and the senate president have set their own rules do do they supersede the policy from the uh state capital joint management commission well the joint management commission is is an unorth as completely unauthorized to make that decision and the whole point was the legislature uh the, the presiding officers uh, they certainly have the ability to make that decision. We firmly believe that the full legislature, uh, the Democrats and the Republicans, should be involved in any kind of important rules, changes like that. And we should debate them on the floor um, or debate them in some reasonable format instead of having just, you know, one, two or three uh, people making the decisions on what is going to be 
uh, access to the state house. We all represent 40 districts. We all represent the same amount of roughly the same amount of people. And that, you know, on the Senate floor or on the assembly floor or in committee uh, meetings, that's where our constituents' voices are heard. And I think that's, and that, that's the main uh, point about this is that there should be access to the people's house and it was being denied. And there's also a lot of inconsistencies as well um, in how the policy uh, you know, would, would be implemented. This is certainly not, um, you know, you mentioned what the, what the message the voters sent to all of you in both houses. Part of the message was get some work done. At least on the assembly side yesterday, they had what, 40 or 50 bills up and they got through seven. That's not a very good batting percentage. What's the public supposed to take away from that? Well, first of all, I mean, that, you'd have to talk to the people f from the assembly, but in the Senate, we actually, we went through our board list. Uh, we, we actually made, I, uh, Senator Testa, Senator Panaccio and, and myself, we made comments on the Senate floor regarding, regarding the policy. The Senate president uh, certainly allowed those comments and, and respected those comments. And you know, listen, in my comments, I said, I certainly hope that the legislature will take up its uh, responsibilities uh, more seriously and be a, a big part of, of the um, decisions going forward because we are a co-equal branch of government. And I certainly think that that's something that, you know, uh, we have to make sure continues to, to happen. And for 21 months, it hasn't. All right. Next time we see him, we're going to be calling him leader. He is the incoming Senate Minority Leader, Steve Araujo. Senator, uh, good to see you. Thanks for coming by and have a great holiday. David, you too. Thank you very much. Great to see you.